Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tech Zulu Live. I'm your host, Amanda Kulong, and we are here at the Source 13 conference by Flurry. And I am now sitting with Diane Eisner with Waze. It's been so long. How are you? I'm doing great. It has been a long time. It's uh, been a crazy 2012, kicking off 2013, and uh, yeah. Goodness. Good times. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, we first chatted with you, gosh, with, with TechZulu talked with Waze a couple of years ago. Yeah, I want to say it was at least. I want to say it was at least two and a half years ago, yeah. and we were only about one year into building up the global presence here. Yeah, and originally started in Israel. Yeah. Israel 2008, kind of building up the technology, um, putting it out to the community, and then it was the end of 2009 that we rolled out here in the U.S. and then mm -hmm. expanded out globally. Now, if you don't know about Waze, and I'd be shocked if you didn't, um, this, this application, I have it on my phone, it is crowdsourced traffic. I mean, we can go into more detail, but real-time traffic so you can get the best route possible to where you're going. I mean, other users can tell you if there's an accident up ahead or if things are slowing down or you get routed around all these crazy streets and it works. Anywhere that we have users, I think that you know the more users we have, the better experience they'll be. But we now have 34 million drivers, 10 million. 34 in the US, million. 34 million, and about I would say last year at this time we had maybe about 10 million. So it's been a very very high growth year, which means that the data and the application has gotten very very good by this point. Yeah. Um, but so what we're doing is we're we're passively collecting the the GPS traces and timestamps. It's all anonymized, and we use that every time people just have the phone. They don't have to do anything while they're driving. We turn that into the map, the traffic, the routes, right. the all that real-time information, and now we're being used um, by 23 TV stations around the country for their traffic information every morning. Well, I remember when you were being used in Los Angeles during this <laughs> thing called Carmageddon when I-405 was shut down because they were doing work on a bridge. Yeah. Everyone seemed to use ways that... Well, it was a pretty crazy time. On the panel, we just spoke about user acquisition and the app space now. How has it changed in the yeah. last years? And what can you count on? How do you build a you know, big distribution? Right. And I was making the case that it's always been by accident. The huh. biggest impacts on our business have been by accident. And one of them, one of the best ones, was Carmageddon. Mm -hmm. A 10 mile stretch of the 405, 500,000 vehicles being displaced, theoretically. Yeah. Um, and the only way to keep track of all those alternate routes in real time would be crowdsourcing. Right. Waze was the first one out there, so ABC7 came to us. They asked us to be embedded in their studio and give them the information, um, and so we did. And then at the end of Carmageddon, they didn't want to stop using it, <laughs> which was great. And now we're on the 23 TV stations. Oh my goodness, it's expanded that much. I mean, it really is the new way of getting traffic reports rather than having the helicopters up above. I mean, it's actually the users on the road that are that are providing that for you. So and it's, it's really for everyday driving. So we also navigate people. If we can, we're going to navigate you around the traffic. If we can't, then we'll at least try to tell you why you're stuck in traffic and make it a more optimistic experience. But yeah. So we might have been monitoring Twitter while you were on the panel. And you know, there are a few folks that were saying that you were really taking charge on that panel. So what else were you saying up on that stage, Diane? Uh, there were probably a couple of themes. Um, <laughs> one was, again, in terms of the difference from when apps launch to now. Yeah. Um, and for us, what do we take advantage of in mobile? For us, it's crowdsourcing, right? But what are we doing now at 34 million people? Yeah. I look at that as really going from crowdsourcing to mass participation. Oh. And what does that mean? We worked with White House and FEMA during Hurricane Sandy to help them figure out where to send the fuel trucks because our community was crowdsourcing what gas stations had power, how long the lines were, and they asked us to do that. Yeah. But you now have enough people engaged in this kind of activity that we can really solve problems beyond traffic, beyond things that, you know, if we save you five minutes a day, right, right. you'll save, I don't know, 40, 50 hours a year or something like that on your commute hours. But if you look at it at scale, 34 million people, 50 million people, 100 million people, we get into hundreds of millions of hours saved. Mm -hmm. And we begin to think, what does that mean collectively, yeah. right? What if we did save that much time for our city? Sorry, it's not just an individual conversation now, right. it's a collective conversation. And we think that we're going to be able to do huge things. Yeah. If you look at Amber Alerts, if you look at um, emergency response, yeah. uh, and that's all just from having a group of people who are already getting enough value that they want to be out there on the roads um, sharing information when it's safe to do so. Yeah, and I, I think you raise a very valid point of when you make these apps, these mobile first apps, 
apps. You build up this amazing community, and it might be for one particular thing at first, like crowdsourcing, but then you have this massive community. What can you do with it? How can you mobilize the community itself and what does for better ways? the community ways? want to do with it? Because so much of it is driven by them, but it's these numbers we've never seen before, and it's very cool. What are you paying attention to in 2013 as it relates to mobile specifically? Definitely this mass participation thing. Um, connected cars will be in our first vehicle in July. It's our first global car. We're in about 17 aftermarket devices right now, so you can go to Best Buy, pay $500, turn any car into a connected car, and we'll be one of the applications that you can use with your smartphone. Um, and we're only doing baby steps in that right now. But you can imagine that by 2014, it will be the car will tell ways when it's running low on fuel and will route you to the cheapest gas along your route, when the windshield wipers are on. So as the car and the, the mobile application become closer together, it gets exciting. Also connected cities, right? When your car can understand when the bridge is up or down, right? These bridges that tweet. And so those things are interesting. From a practical perspective, we're focused on users, happy users, increasing engagement, the same metrics we always have been. We want to have a strong and very, very happy community that we're saving lots of time for. Um, and then we launched our ad platform November 7th this past year, and really focusing on how do you create a, a great brand engagement experience for an advertiser and make sure that the community feels it's a service for them. Yeah. Wow, so much going on with you guys. <laughs> oh, and then there's China and Japan and yeah, say what markets, <laughs> you know, what markets are, are we going to be seeing ways expanding into next? So we're in most markets now at different levels of development, right. obviously. Where you're going to see that we're absent still is is China and Japan. We're very, very low there. Yeah. Uh, we're going to we're we're making very big moves mm -hmm. into those markets. The traffic is terrible. The adoption of social applications is very high. The need is there, and we just have to make sure that we're taking the right steps and moving slowly and cautiously. And source 13. Initial thoughts, number one conference, like first time out. Um, does this feel like a brand new conference to you? It feels like Le Web to me. I don't know if you guys have been to Le Web. I've been to Le Web, it's, yes. It's a conference that um, treats people respectfully and, and in a civilized manner, meaning good food, high caliber speakers, high caliber attendees. And in Silicon Valley, we want to do everything fast, so you don't always get to that level. But I'm um, very impressed. I'm so excited to be you know, seeing people that I haven't seen in a long time, being challenged in my own ideas. We got great gifts. The food, fantastic. The I've, food was Amazing. I ate way too much. Yeah. This is a conference where you're actually slowing down to stop. Usually you're running through a conference and it doesn't, it, it's our home territory, so you just kind of run through and get back to your day. But this is very high quality for what I've seen locally. Great. It's wonderful to hear. And so, source 14, source 15, source 20, hopefully we'll see more they sources. They so well, I'll be back anytime they want me to be back. Did you hear that, Flurry? <laughs> Did you hear that? That came from Diane over here. All right. Well, I know that you probably have a ton to get to, um, and you'll probably use ways to get there. I'm sure. So, I look forward to our next chat, as always, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was really great to see you. We'll do hugs, too. We'll do but anyway. Not on camera. Not on camera. Yeah. So she thinks. All right, everybody, this is <laughs> Diane with Waze. I'm Amanda Kulang. We will catch you soon.